Welcome to day number one. We're going to start every single day by trying to work, generally speaking, from the ends of our fingers up towards the middle. So this is going to be an upper body primary course, and we're going to start out and move our way in. So we're going to start with our forearm. Our forearm is uh, generally has two main areas that have a lot of muscle in them. One is the set of muscles that takes your wrist and your fingers and pulls down and in like that. And almost all of those muscles are attached to the inside or underside of your arm if you flip your hand down. So it's this big chunk of muscles here. And then we have another big chunk of muscles that takes our wrist and our hands and extends them. So if you pull your hands up, all the muscles on the outside of your arm. So we have a big chunk of muscles here uh, on the part of our arm that has almost no hair or much less hair on it. And then we have a big chunk of muscles here on the part of our arm that has more hair on it. So what we're going to start with today is we are going to start by working on the flexor muscles. These muscles on most people tend to get very tight purely because most of what we do as humans is we grasp onto things. We don't spend a lot of time extending our wrist with a lot of need for resistance. So most of these are the muscles that get a lot of, uh, a lot of work throughout the day and they tend to get pretty tight. So when we're doing this, we're going to use one of the balls that we've got. I'd prefer that you start with something fairly soft and we're going to start on a tabletop or a countertop as long as it's high enough that you can put some kind of pressure down into it. Um, one of the things I want you to do is I just want you to avoid going right onto the bone that's right on the inside here. So there's two bones here. One is the point of your elbow and one is on the inside of your elbow. And in between those is where you hit your funny bone. Not really all that great. So all I want you to do is avoid getting all the way up onto those bones. You can go anywhere from here down. So you're going to get yourself into a position either seated if you're at something that's lower or standing up if it's near a countertop or something like the top of a bar. And you are just going to place a ball right out in front of you just to the side of your chest and you're going to turn your palm towards the ground and you're going to just uh, roll straight front to back for now. So for the most part, you can actually explore the entire underside of your arm. So you can go from the, f the, the crease on your wrist all the way up to just short of those bones. And so we're just going to do a few seconds out towards our wrist is where we're going to start. So you're going to let your hand turn down towards the floor. And you don't need to worry about putting too much pressure into it for now. So as we're doing this, you might find that you get some changing in sensation going into your hands. Um, that's entirely normal. As long as it wears off after we're done, that's fine. So a lot of people are going to get maybe some tingling or they might get a little bit of discomfort or hotness in the, in the palm of their hand. That's entirely normal. So now that we've done out towards the wrist a little bit, let's move towards the middle of our forearm. And we're just going to move again front to back and if you want to lean away it'll give you the ability to get a little more towards the inside and if you want to lean over towards it it'll allow you to get a little more towards the bone so once we've done that a little bit we're going to take it all the way back so that it's almost at our elbow so you can go on the front in through here and you can go straight in through here so you might actually even want to turn your thumb all the way over down towards the ground to really get that spot on the inside of your elbow there just as long as we're not hitting that bone. Or you can keep your elbow bent, and you can move straight front to back. So you probably just saw me actually have this ball slip towards me. Um, if you're putting a lot of pressure into it, there's a chance that's going to happen. So one of the things that I've done is I've got this little table here. I've actually put my yoga mat on top of it because the yoga mat's going to stop the ball from slipping away. Um, and if you can, try to do this on bare skin if it's not going to cause any issues for you, purely because doing it over top of the sleeve of a shirt is going to make it a little slipperier on the ball and make it more likely that it's just going to get away on you. Good. So that's it for that part of our forearm. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're also going to use the ball for. And we're going to start working on our biceps. So the biceps are, uh, a lot of people use the name biceps as if it refers to our entire upper arm. But really, it's just one muscle that's on the front of our upper arm. So it's the muscle, if you turn your palm up towards the ceiling and bend your elbow at 90 degrees, it's the muscle that's right in the very front of your arm here, this little mound. So that little spot for a lot of people can actually be quite tight. And one of the main reasons is because it not only flexes our elbow up like this, it also raises our palm up up in front of us because it goes from the front of our elbow here all the way up and over top of our shoulder. But most people where they've got some issues and some tightness is right in the middle of this muscle right in through here. And most people are going to get a little more of an issue with it down towards the kind of biggest part of the lump. That's a little further down towards the elbow. So you can do this on either arm. Um, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to take the ball and we're going to start towards the top and we're going to actually slowly roll it down and see if we find any areas that feel particularly tight. And then we're going to go a little more towards the inside 
and we're going to do the exact same thing. So if you kind of first spend a little bit of time exploring around in your bicep, what you'll probably find is you'll go, oh, there's a little spot in there that just doesn't feel particularly nice. So once you've explored around, and we'll call that scanning, once you've scanned the entire bicep with the ball, um, you're probably going to find some spots that you go, yeah, that's the one right there. So all I want you to do for now is we're going to find that spot, we're going to put a little bit of extra pressure into it, we're going to try to let our arm relax as much as we can, and then all we're going to do is do this sort of short pulsing back and forth on that little part. You don't have to push as hard as you can, just want you to put a little bit of pressure in there, and you're just going to start pulsing back and forth. And we're going to do that for a count of about 10 seconds. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then after you're done that, you can probably kind of scan around and make sure things are nice and comfy again. After you're done doing this on your bicep, we're going to move up. One of the most common sore places in the upper body is actually the biceps tendon. So a tendon, by definition, is something that attaches a muscle to a bone, whereas a ligament attaches a bone to a bone. So the tendons of our muscles are always at the ends and not right in the middle. So our biceps tendon, our biceps is here and it runs right up the front of our arm, getting smaller and smaller until it turns into a tendon and it dives underneath our, uh, our shoulder muscle here called our deltoid. So right in the front, you can see this little seam on my shirt right here. It's right around there, and it runs straight top to bottom. So this tendon, right in through here, can get quite sore on a lot of people. So that little tendon is where we're going to spend a little bit of time. So again, you're going to take your ball, and you're going you're to start. Probably the easiest thing to do for a lot of people, by the way, is to actually be backed up against the back of a chair, um, purely because it makes it so we're not using muscle to push forward. You're going to start by kind of scanning around. So the easiest thing to do is to kind of do it with a little bit, not necessarily a flat palm, but a slightly curved palm like that. And you're just going to start rolling around in the front in there. And again, you're probably going to find one spot where you go, ooh, that's pretty tight. That's a little uncomfortable in there. You don't necessarily have to put a lot of extra pressure, but I want you to, after you've done a good scan around the front here, I want you to go back to that spot and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do about 10 seconds where we're just kind of pulsing around and rolling around. It doesn't have to be in any direction specifically. It can be side to side, it can be top to bottom, or it can be these little circles. All I want you to do is about 10 seconds where we're just pulsing around in here. Okay, so let's do a count of 10 starting now. Get that spot, 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good. So one of the things that you'll probably notice is the shoulder that has to hold the ball into place is going to get pretty fatigued. So you're going to want to make sure you go and do the exact same thing on the other side. So next, we are going to be working on the side of our neck. So it's really important that you don't go too close to the front of your neck on this, purely because it has the ability to alter your blood pressure. So there's a little knob right in here towards the front of our neck that's just off to the side that actually controls, it senses the amount of pressure in our blood vessels. And so it's really important that you don't go in from the front and hit onto that spot. It would take a lot of work and a lot of pressure to really make something dangerous happen, but we just want to make sure that we're not going too close to the area. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in straight from the side and we're going to be working essentially from right below our ear straight down to the side of our neck. So the easiest place to start again is to take the ball and if you have a smaller ball I'd encourage you to use that for this um, but I tend to use the same size ball for almost everything. You're going to start just below the ear and you want to make sure that you're not so far forward that you're hitting your jaw. So it'd start below the ear and then roll back just a tiny little bit. Once you've rolled back a tiny little bit you're going to use the same kind of pressure with the same kind of hand shape. So you can have your hand where it's not perfectly flat but you kind of have curved a little bit just so that you can alter the amount of pressure you put in. For a lot of people, having this sort of thing is entirely fine from the same side, but if you have an arm that you get to, gets really sore from doing this, you're also welcome to turn your head slightly to one side and use the arm from the other side. It's entirely up to you whatever technique works best. For me, it's usually the same side arm. So for this one, we want to make sure that we're not holding in any one place for too long. So what we want to do is just constantly explore top to bottom. So what we're going to do, and you can follow along with me now, is you're just going to spend maybe 20 to 30 seconds kind of going top to bottom throughout the entire area. And again, you want to make sure you're not going too far forward, that you're just spending your time rolling from below your ear, kind of straight down, and you can let your head go towards the same side as the ball, or you can open it up a little bit, and you can go a little bit backwards from there as well. So there's a whole bunch of muscles in here, 
Anatomically, this is one of the more complex places in our entire body. And one of the reasons that we just don't want to put too much pressure in and we don't want to hang out too long is that there's a lot of nerves, there's a lot of blood vessels, and some of your blood pressure is controlled in the area with that little bulb. So we just want to make sure that we're just going gently back and forth, but it should feel pretty good on your neck as well. Some people will all no also notice if they put too much pressure in here that it can actually give them some kind of pain into the arm. And that doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. Generally, what that's going to mean is that you're just rolling on top of some of the nerves that are coming out of the side of your neck, and those nerves go down all the way to your fingertips. So as long as that goes away after we're done, that's entirely fine. Good. So that's it for the side of the neck. Make sure you repeat on the other side if you want to do so. Our last exercise of the day today, we are going to again be using the ball, and we're going to be using it on the back side of our shoulder. The back of the shoulder can be pretty tender, so you're going to want to make sure that you're using a softer ball if you have one, and we're just going to be starting with the capsule on the back of our shoulder. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is essentially find the height of around where the widest part of your shoulder is. It's going to be right around there and maybe a tiny little bit higher. And then you're going to take your arm and you're actually going to cradle it across the front of you and put the ball on the wall right behind that. So for me, this means I'm going to be at around this height. And then I'm going to pin that ball in place I'm going to cradle my arm here. So all we're going to do from here is we're going to move ourselves a little bit kind of up and down and a little bit front to back. So the back and outside of our shoulder are some areas that are typically quite tender. So you're going to want to make sure that you go quite slow. There's no reason for us to put a lot of pressure into the area. What you'll find is if you do this course a couple times or if you do this maneuver frequently, it'll get less sensitive on its own without you having to go very hard. So there's no reason to dig in extremely hard. If you find around the back of your shoulder, you're really not getting much, uh, and by that I mean it's not tender at all, it doesn't feel like it's really doing much for you. The next natural thing that you can do is you can actually take your elbow, pull it up, and pull it across just a tiny little bit more, and that usually exposes some new areas of the shoulder that are going to be a little tighter, which is the back of our shoulder capsule. So for now, we're just going to do about 10 more seconds where we're just going to do these little circles. You can find some of these tender spots, and you can mash them out a little bit. So let's do 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And that's it for day number one. Hopefully you learned a few new techniques. I'll see you on day number two.